I'd like to introduce Dr. Yvonne Karen from the Ludwig Maximilians University of Munich, who we're going to be telling us about the phenotype and natural history of the Turkhan cohort. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Ivan. So just let me share my screen. Okay. Thank you very much, Suzanne, for the introduction. Good afternoon from, uh, to everybody from Munich. And special thanks to the organizers for this great um, uh, colloquium. Let me start straight ahead. I would like to present to you some um, phenotype and baseline uh, natural history data from our PCAN TCON cohort. Okay. So uh, for all of you who are not so familiar with TIRCON, TIRCON stands for Treat Iron-Related Childhood Onset Neurodegeneration. And it is a large registry, NBIA registry, uh, designed as a multi-center prospective registry. And it uh, contains both cross-sectional and longitudinal data from patients. It's open for all NBIA forms or even for clinically just suspected NBIA without a final genetic diagnosis. As you can see, we have a lot of uh, TIRCON partners or associates who are actively contributing or have contributed to the registry. It is designed as a yearly uh, follow-up registry, so we plan to see patients on a, a yearly basis and to assess them. We enrolled our first patient by February 2013. And right now, as you can see on my next slide, we have over 400 patients enrolled into the registry. Taking into consideration all follow-up visits, there are over 1,200,000 uh, visits entered into the registry. And we hope to even that the curve will even grow larger. We are not planning to flatten the curve in this case. So here you can see the distribution of uh, a, each signal NBIA diagnosis. You can see that PCAN is quite dominant in our registry. It accounts for about 60% of, of all the registry entries. For the registry, we have divided PCAN into two phenotypes, a classic phenotype and an atypical phenotype. They are mainly distributed by the age of onset. For the classical phenotype, it is to the age up to six years with onset. And we measure the disease progression yearly, um, assessed by the BAD scale, assessing dystonia by the UPDRS, part three scale, assessing the motor function, FIM, VFIM, and PETSQL taking um, quality of life into consideration. So on the next slide, you can see some characteristics of the cohort. So we have 220 PCAN patients with a mean age of onset at eight years. And here you can see how long did it take from the age of onset, so from the first symptom to the clinical diagnosis. And there's no significant difference between the classic and the atypical phenotype. In the mean, it's 6.4 years. This may also be quite interesting, the time from age of onset to wheelchair dependency, which is in the mean 7.9 years. Which is also quite interesting, how many patients from the 220 are wheelchair dependent? Overall, it's almost half. And also a lot of these patients do have a DBS, a deep brain stimulation and also a gastric tube. You can see some of the most frequent um, PEN2 mutations causing the PCAN phenotype, which is quite, it's, as you can see, some, dominate, uh, some mutations are quite prominent in uh, PCAN. For example, the 1561 mutation is quite equally distributed between the atypical and the classic phenotype, whereas other mutations, it's quite unclear why. Like the 1583 mutation is way more present in the atypical phenotype, just like the um, 790 mutation. And for instance, the other mutation, the 573 deletion is way more prominent in the classic phenotype. On this slide, you see the most prominent, most frequent symptoms in PCAN. 
distributed by atypical and classic phenotype. Atypical phenotype is the, are the blue marks and the classic phenotype are the red ones. So as you can see, I will only point out maybe a few interesting points. For the classic phenotype, for instance, you can see that cognitive impairment, global developmental delay, or delayed speech and language development seem to be way more prominent in the classic phenotype than they are in the atypical phenotype. On the other hand, dysatria, oromandibular dystonia, or even behavioral abnormalities seem to, seem to be more prominent in the atypical phenotype. The other motor um, functional impairments are quite equally distributed. So on this slide, um, you have some baseline data from our most two most important uh, motor functional scales. So this is the BED, the Barry Albright Estonia scale, which is in the light green uh, color. Here you can see the baseline BED scale for classic phenotype, atypical phenotype, the phenotypes combined, and um, all NBIA uh, diagnosis, excluding uh, PCAN. As you can see, for all PCAN phenotypes, the baseline uh, bed scale when we first saw the patients is around 20. The maximum point for, for bed is uh, 32 points. As you can, as, and bed is a uh, scale which indicates dystonia. So you can see, in contrast to the other NBIA diagnosis, um, dystonia seems to be way more prominent in PCAN. On the other hand, when you look at the UPDRS scale, which is actually a Parkinson, a Parkinson scale, but it's quite handy to assess uh, motor impairment. Um, the baseline value for all PCAN is quite comparable to uh, the other NBIA diagnosis. So on the next slide, you can see some longitudinal data actually. You see this highlighted blue curve which is the average, uh, which contains the average values of each single uh, patient, of each single patient's uh, bad score. On this slide, for instance, you can see the bad score and the years into the disease. And each color indicates a different patient. And the blue line is the average line, actually. So what can you see on this slide? You can see that the bad scale actually worsens year by year until it reaches a plateau above 20 points or something, 10 years after the onset of the disease. Then it kind of holds the um, plateau and starts to increase a few years later. The same actually goes for the UPDRS indicating the motor impairment function. So why is that? Actually, I think it's quite clear for all of us that the disease worsens by nature then it reaches a plateau because the bad scale only can assess dystonia up to 30, uh, 30, uh, 32 points. And then you have the atypical phenotypes or the more milder PCAN phenotypes, which worsen way later. So maybe like 15 or 20 years uh, into disease. And that's why the curve actually starts growing again after this time. This is a quite complex uh, statistical analysis and it's, it's quite handy to assess the longitudinal data that we have uh, gathered from the patients by applying the BED scale or the UPDRS scale. And we hope for our registry to have way more patients to, to back up this, um, these curves with, uh, with uh, more numbers of patients with more data and to gain uh, some more knowledge into the natural phenotype and the natural history of this disease. Thank you very much. This would be about it. Thank you very much, Dr. Karen, for uh, a very nice presentation. Are there any questions uh, from the audience? I don't have any yet in my uh, question box. Here's one that just appeared now. How do your data compare to the recent PCAN paper from Asia? It's a very good question. Dr. Karen? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I'm not quite familiar with this paper, so I have to look it up and um, maybe we can get together in the network lounge. 
Okay. And uh, there's yeah, an I... ant answer from uh, Dr. Sebong uh, to everyone. I see. Uh, I don't. Uh, are we using chat or are we using Q and A? I'm trying to. Oh, we've gone to chat now. Um, um, the, the bad score. Odie mentioned that in the Asia paper, the bad score decreased in at least one patient. So the question is, how is it possible that a bad score yes. has decreased? Well, um, actually, this is this may happen because um, when you first uh, see the patients, maybe they don't have a DBS or something, and with deep brain stimulation, usually they do get better for a few years at least. So it's, I think it's, it should be expected that some patients uh, do have a better bad score for at least a few years. Okay, thank you very much. I will close the questions for now, and it's time to move on to the next. Uh, wait, there's one more question. Do you think there is value in a more disease-specific PCAN disease rating scale? Well, yeah, I definitely do. But um, I think uh, several uh, groups are also working on this and there is, there's definitely need for another scale specifically designed for PCAN, which also not only focuses on the dystonia, but also on the motor functional impairment.